Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we are going to cover how to render out an animation. So in this video, we have this basic turntable. And I am looking at turntable camera. So if you don't see this white outline, you can just activate it up here and it's called your resolution gate. So activate that and this will show you your resolution. So this is what you are going to render anything inside the space, anything outside of this space, it will not be rendered. So notice that this is gonna, probably going to cut off the bottom of my base and that's okay because the main focus is after all the character. If you guys are doing animations, you might want to turn on the, the what's called action safe and title safe. So action safe just means that anything between this green line and the edge of this film gate, it might get cut off depending on what type of television. So it's important that you make sure that your main action is not inside this space. And I'm going to turn off title save. It, as long as the action remains inside this space, you should be okay. This one is in case you have actual text. For example, you might have a 3D logo or something really important or your name, for example. Um, you want to make sure that it is in title safe. That means that no matter what television you're watching this in, it could be your grandmother's super old television or it could be in a movie screen or it could be in the gym televisions that seem to crop everything it will always be safe this is called title safe so you want to make sure that your logo your name or anything like that remains in this space so now that you understand these options I'm going to turn them off let's go ahead and render so up here at the top with this little clapper and a gear it's called the render settings let's open that up and you're going to notice that we are using the Arnold renderer and we're going to start with the common tab. The first part you want to take a look at is the file output. What is this name going to be called? Now, right now it is named after my project, which is like female character turn and I spelled table wrong. So turn tablet. What I want to do is actually call it something else. So this will be female turn table. So if you have your project set correctly, which you hopefully you have take a look at the path the images are going to be rendered in images so i might have some random things in my images and i don't want to add more what i want maya to do is create a folder called turntable and then inside that folder it will have all of my renders that will keep everything really nice and organized so over here i'm going to type in turntable and then i'm going to use a slash and I'm sorry, I don't know if it's forward slash or backslash, but it's kind of going from left to right, bottom top. Sorry, I don't know which one it is. I should look that up. Image format, I'm going to change this into TIFF. Now you can keep it at EXR, but uh, I don't really have any render layers or anything happening. So this is just a TIFF and TIFF keeps transparencies, which is what I want. And my compression is none. Take a look up here and you'll notice that the file name is now called turntable slash female turntable. Perfect. And next I need to tell it this is an animation right now. It's only going to render one scene. So under frame animation, I want to make sure I choose name number extension. Now you'll notice that it shows turntable, female turntable dot zero zero one dot tiff. And then after that, it's the same information, except it says zero one zero, which is 10 dot tiff. I'm trying to tell it that I want it to render between one and in this case, it's 10, which I'm going to change, but that means that it's going to be animated. Now, be careful. One of the biggest mistakes I see is people choose the one below, which is name extension number, and that doesn't really work. So uh, there's no extension called 001. So just double check to make sure that name number extension is correct. This is one of the biggest mistakes I've seen uh, new students make. So just double check to make sure that is correct, because you will have to either rename the every single image or you will have to re-render and both of them take a lot of valuable time all right let's go scroll down go to frame range and now we have start which is one and then it's up to you where the end frame is this is a 180 uh, frame animation so i'm going to type in 180. i'm going to keep scrolling down under renderable cameras this is in case you are not rendering from perspective i actually am going to be rendering in my turntable camera so I'm going to choose that. And by the way, you can watch the video tutorial on how to create a turntable in a previous tutorial. Take a look. So again, I'm choosing here and I'm going to choose perspective. Whoops, sorry, turntable. I'm going to scroll down and this is my preset. 
My preset means that I have decided that the render is HD 540. Now, if you open this up, you're going to notice that there's a lot of other stuff in here. If you're interested in making like a, a letter, which is a 300 DPI, uh, there's a whole bunch of ranges, but you might, uh, 540 is actually relatively small. So let's compare. Here's 540 and I'm going to render one right now. This is considered HD 540. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like if I choose 720. This is HD 720. Notice how much it fills up the, the screen. This is very important for you to understand that the bigger the resolution, the longer the render will take. However, the higher the quality and it will look great when you bring it up into, let's say a television, your HD screen, depending on what you have. So HD 540 has a tendency to be the default because it's small, but remember you need to increase your render size so that you can get a really nice quality render. Let's take a look at 1080. So again, I'm going to go over to here, render settings, HD 1080. And I'll be right back. This is what HD 1080 looks like. It can't even fit on my screen because, well, it probably goes from one, one edge of my monitor to another. And that's great because that's what I want. I want it to be a really large render. Uh, for this example, I'm actually going to keep it at HD 540 just to show you how to quickly render. But you have to consider for your projects, which one do you want? Is it is it like just an example? Then I would do HD 540. Is it for maybe a project that, that you need to turn in? 720 is probably a good bet. Is this something for your portfolio that's going to be displayed in YouTube or some social, like it's really important for it to be viewed in high quality, then HD 1080 is the way to go. I would highly recommend that if you're going to be publishing some sort of animation, like an actual legit animation, you stick to HD 1080 in the least. So if I scroll down in the quality, I actually kept every single one of them. This is what it would look like if I took it HD 540 and stretched it out to be 1080. That is very low quality. You don't want that. If I click on 1.1, one, one, this is what it actually looks like. If I go over here to 1080 and I click 1.1, one, one, this is what it looks like. Also take a look at the render time. It increases exponentially. This is 26 seconds, which is not bad. Uh, the one with HD 720 took 11 seconds and 540 took seven seconds. So it's not bad at all. Um, just keep that in mind when you're rendering so you can kind of calculate how long it's going to take. All right, so now that we talked about image size, I'm going to take it back to uh, 540. Again, this is more of a preview. And I think that's it for this thing. By the way, if you guys are interested in print, so some people may be asking like, hey, I really want a really nice render for print. You need to make sure that your resolution is higher than 72. 72 is perfect for screen because you, ne you never zoom in, so you don't lose quality. But if you are going to render for like a magazine or anything in print, you need to change the resolution to 300. This is kind of like graphic design 101. Okay, so now we did common, let's go to Arnold. Arnold is about the quality of the render. If I take a look at my render, and again, I'm going to go back to my, the one that took seven seconds, I'm going to click one, one. If there's noise that are reducing the quality of your render, you need to go in here and crank up the settings. Right now, it's only taking seven seconds to render, but that's just the default settings. If you want to increase your render, I would increase this uh, camera AA24, which is just the sample sizes increase. And also all of these guys, which is the color, specularity. Um, I do have a little bit of transmission because of this ball. I don't, oh yeah, I think I have subsurface. I'm putting a subsurface and I don't have any fog, so I'm going to keep it at that. I'm also going to open up adaptive sampling and enable it. 20 is a lot. I'm going to drop it to maybe six. So what's going to happen is that it's going to bounce back between four and six. So let's say that it that Arnold recognizes that this little cube right here um, has a lot of, you know, contact shadows, diffuse settings, you know, all sorts of stuff. It's going to spend more time there and sample it six times instead of four. So keep that in mind that, again, it's going to increase your render time, but the quality is going to be significantly better. So now that I have these now, don't go too crazy. Some people actually go all the way up. It's not going to help. You can go probably up to five and then four, 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 but eventually you're going to increase all these settings and it doesn't do anything. So you're wasting time and you're not being efficient. So just make sure that you keep tabs of your settings. All of these we're not really going to need because they're much more advanced, but these are the two basic tabs that you need to look at. I don't want a background. So 
as you can see, there's this gradient right here. I don't want that background. I'm going to open up the attributes. I'm going to scroll down and go into my visibility and change it to zero. So that's not going to change anything for the lighting, but it is going to make this look like it is not there. So let me show you what I mean. If I click on this, this is the alpha. If I go back to RGB and you'll notice that the alpha is white. That means that if I bring this into Photoshop or any type of compositing software, um, it will be solid. But if I render, all right, I pause and so now I'm back. Um, you'll notice that the background is clear. If I click on the RGB, you'll notice that there's a cutout. So that means I can replace the background with anything that I want. Go back to RGB. And if I compare the render, you'll notice that nothing has changed in the lighting. The only thing that's changed is just that the background is now black. That's it. So it's pretty sweet. And that's what I want. I want that transparency. So again, when you look at your render settings, you want to make sure this is a TIFF. If you change it into a JPEG, it will not have transparency. So TIFFs, PNGs, whichever you like, just make sure that you do not use JPEG. All right, we are set. The next thing we want to do is save. So file, save as. We already tested it out to make sure everything looks good. Um, everything looks good on my end and we are ready to go. So over here at the top left, let's go to rendering and we are going to go to render, render sequence, go to the options. Again, double check to make sure you are in the correct camera. Make sure it helps if you look over here to make sure you're in the correct camera as well. And then I'm going to click on render sequence and close. Um, this is going to slow down my computer like crazy. So I am going to press pause and I will see you in a second. Tip number one. Do not just walk away. Double check to make sure that your render is actually rendering through the right camera. So just kind of keep an eye on your renders. Tip number two, double check to make sure in your images folder that it's rendering correctly and it's placing it there correctly. Here I am in my images. I'm going to go to my turntable and you'll see that my female turntable is actually working. So here's, uh, here's frame number one frame number two and frame number three still working. So it's important that you make sure that everything's looking good before you walk away and let it render. If it's not working right and every, maybe it's looking at a different camera, just go ahead and press escape. That will stop the render, fix whatever you need to fix, and then start again. It will replace the images when you render sequence again. That was my two tips and I will be right back. And there we go. We have one to 180 frames. So I just want to let you know that it took a little while. Each of these frames are about 40 seconds with 180 frames. You can calculate a little bit of how long it's going to take. But just to let you know, I went and I paused the video. I made dinner. I cleaned everything up and I came back and it was still rendering. So as you can imagine, it does take some time to render. So make sure that uh, you give yourself plenty of time to render your stuff so that you can have a completed project. Okay, so how do we take these images? I'm gonna double click here, keyboard key to move it to the right so you can see that it's looking good. I'm gonna use what's called encoder. You can use After Effects and Premiere, whatever you like, but encoder will work just fine. Looks like this. So the way it works, is that I'm going to click on this little plus sign, but uh, I'm going to copy this. So select that, control C, go back into encoder, click on this little plus sign. And I'm going to go to my turntable and click on that first frame. Going to tell you, do you want a TIFF image file sequence? Yes. And then click open. So you will see here that it will say female turntable one through 180, and it's a TIFF. Um, the default is H264, which is perfect. Um, the match source is medium bitrate, which it work. If you guys want a high quality render, then you need to go to high bitrate. I'm going to click on this guy right here, which is telling me where am I going to place this video? I am going to place it in my 3D projects, uh, my female character, and there is a section for movies. So I'm going to go ahead and call it female turntable. Just get rid of all these random numbers and then click save and then hit play. It's going to show you a preview here. The background is black, so there's nothing there. There's no text or anything to describe it, which if you want all of that stuff, you would have to go into After Effects, but this should work for just to see your movie. I'm gonna click again on this link, which will open up the location, double click, and there she is.
Now remember, this is, you can see that she's a little blurry, right? And that's because this is H.264 and I've extended it all the way to match my screen. So let me go ahead and make it smaller. And there you go. Now, this is something important for you guys to note. Notice that it says 29.97 uh, frames per second. Remember that the animation that we did was actually 24 frames per second. So 29.97 is usually for a uh, video, but if you have accurate animation or you want something specific, then you need to go ahead and make sure that this renders at 24 frames per second. So I will show you how to do that. I'm gonna click on this little plus sign and I again click on the first one. This time I have to go to my match high source, click on that. And over here, we have something called the frame rate. Go ahead and turn that check mark off and then you're gonna change this to 24. I'm also uh, gonna turn off audio because it doesn't require any audio, click OK. And then once again, I'm going to drop it off in my movies. And I'm going to say this is 24 frames per second. Press play. Let it do its thing. Here is my movie. And now this is the actual accurate frame rate. And you can see at the bottom it says 24. And there you go. You can see that the animation's going on over here on the little sphere that she's got. Um, she's got the base, everything's rendered well, the quality is doing well, and you have now a rendered image. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions or comments by leaving a message below. I'm always interested to hear what you think. If you think this video was helpful and interesting, please go ahead and like and subscribe. That would be amazing. That really encourages me to make more videos like these. And take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. That's where you can find my uh, free downloads, free eBooks, free trainings, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. And if you have time, subscribe to my newsletter. If this has been helpful, please tag me in your social media. I would love to see your turntable. Uh, I am in Twitter and also in Instagram. So feel free to uh, tag me. I would love to see your work. So thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.